Hi everyone, today is another of my videos for my 12 tags of 2014 series and this is my May tag. So here's Tim's inspiration and I'm about to show you my interpretation. So ignore the fact that I've got a brown tag base at the moment because I will change that in a second when I've finished putting together my quilt pieces. Now Tim told us to go and get our embellishments, arrange them on a tag and then cut our quilt pieces accordingly. I've decided to do it the opposite way around and create a quilt um, and then to go and find some embellishments to fit on each of the pieces. So I'll be working on the size and position of these elements as I go along and I'm first of all going to uh, create my colour scheme and I started out by picking out scattered straw, Victorian velvet, milled lavender and shaded lilac as my distressing colours thinking that I would use all four but in the end I used only the three which was the scattered straw, the Victorian velvet and the shaded lilac to create my little quilt and I'm doing uh, just a, a simple background colour to each of the pieces. Again I'm using a piece of scrap to avoid getting uh, fingerprints all over my little pieces and then I'm going to just rub on the Distress Ink to colour each of the little uh, quilt sections. So here I am trying another colour for the background and this time I'm using um, iced spruce and I think already you can see it just is a better colour for the pieces uh, that I've chosen as a background. So never be afraid to change your mind. So I'm doing exactly the same technique, uh, just a rough colouring of the tag, just swirling the ink over starting out at the edges and working my way into the center and then I'm going to be using water to add the texture to my background. I always love how this uh, t this actual um, water technique works. It's a great way to add texture um, and you can use it to create snowy backgrounds which is quite nice so having a blue or a midnight blue background and then flicking water onto it in this way the little splatters that lift the ink become the snow in the sky or even the stars in the sky and uh, it really is a nice random effect and in this instance I'm just using it to create just a little bit of texture to my background tag. Next I wanted to distress the edges of all my pieces so I'm just using my scissors I'm going slightly off camera, sorry about that, to um, just distress the edges of my tag and all my quilt pieces before coming back in with the whatever colour ink that I've used on that piece to darken those distress, distressed edges and it just adds a little bit of a frame to each of the pieces. I decided to use some stamps to add a little bit more texture to my uh, card pieces and I'm going to be doing this on all of the pieces that I've created so far and I'm going to be using these uh, border stamps which are Stampers Anonymous Classic Number 6 and I'm just going to use them uh, unmounted so that I can just create little bits of texture um, from, I've got this one which is a bit like a ledger and I've got a print one here that I'm just using the same colour ink as my background, so using the iced spruce just to add tiny uh, pieces of extra texture and interest to the background. And then I'm repeating those same steps, so distressing the edges, then inking the edges and then stamping the texture onto each of my little quilt pieces and again uh, all using the same uh, coloured ink to the actual piece itself. And you can see uh, the distressing and the inking of the edges just adds a frame to each of the little quilt pieces and then a little bit more interest added with the stamping. I found that on my yellow pieces uh, using the um, 
scattered straw didn't work so I'm just coming in with some more of the iced spruce so that the texture shows up on the yellow tag and it also just brings a bit of that grey into the actual quilt pieces themselves. You can see here the quilt is starting to take shape and uh, the backgrounds are definitely looking more interesting with the distressed edges and the stamping. The next I'm just creating my little um, reinforcer for the top of my tag and uh, as you know I always punch a hole into a piece of card using my crocodile um, and I've coloured and I'm going to stamp it in the same way as I did the yellow pieces for my quilt. So I'm just taking a little bit of ice spruce and one of my stamps to add a little bit of texture, just making sure the print's the right way around. Though since it's a circle it probably wouldn't have mattered too much. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my half inch circle punch and I've turned it upside down so I can see uh, where the hole is on my cardstock and I centre that on the half inch circle and punch. And again with the distressing of the edges and re-inking with the scattered straw. And then before I lose it, I'm going to attach it to my tag. So just using some PVA glue and attaching it in position to the top of the tag and repunching the hole. Ready for the ribbon at the top of the tag. So my next design decision was to actually treat this as a quilt and I decided I'm going to get out my little sewing machine which you may have seen before on my videos and I'm going to stitch around each of my little quilt pieces. So I've loaded up my spool with um, black cotton because I've decided that's going to be my accent colour for this tag and as you can see it works quite well. Um, I've just got to be a little bit careful keeping my tag uh, running straight and the other thing that you have to be quite careful of is this little machine it creates a kind of chain stitch rather than a top and bottom thread there's no spool um, inside this machine like there is on a larger sewing machine so um, you do have to be a little bit careful that you keep hold of your ends and tie them off properly when you've finish, finished stitching but it is a nice little uh, thing to be able to quickly use on your desk uh, and might not be quite so easy to control as a large machine but I'm happy with that look for this kind of work so um, I'm going to stitch around all the pieces of my tag. I even decide that I'm going to go around the reinforcer and uh, this one was a little bit tricky as you will see um, because one it's a circle so it's a little bit difficult to control the machine going around and two it um, involves rotating the tag underneath quite a short arm that's the other disadvantage of the small machine so you can see I'm kind of rolling it because I don't really want to crease my tag um, and I'm really taking my time just stitching a couple of stitches at a time and rotating around that reinforcing circle uh, it's not perfect but it will do for this little project So here's all the little pieces stitched and ready for their ends to be uh, tied off. So I'm really pleased with how this has turned out and uh, you can see here that kind of chain effect on the back uh, that you have to be careful that um, by tying the threads off it stops the actual stitching coming undone. So it was a little bit of a, a job and I did it in front of the TV rather than that. <laughs> let you sit and watch me re-threading needles and uh, making little knots 
to tie off my quilt pieces. So I think I might have to trim some of these pieces so I can see a little bit more of the grey background but that's the kind of uh, layout that I'm going to be going for and uh, now it's time to start sticking these pieces down and finding the little embellishments uh, that I'm going to display on each of these pieces. So I'm just carefully trimming each of the little pieces just to create a little bit more of a division or a space in between each of the little quilt pieces because I quite like to uh, definitely be able to see the stitching around the outside of the tag as well as creating a little bit of space in between each of the little pieces. And then I'm using a PVA glue just to glue them into position. And that's the quilt all finished off and I am going to add a black frame once I've got all my little elements on my individual quilt pieces. So I've been collecting little bits and pieces as I've gone in and out of my craft room um, picking up bits and pieces that I'm using on my tag and uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to just add a little bit of interest to each of the elements as I add them to my base tag. So as usual, I don't have all the elements that Tim used on his tag. I've got some of them. Some of them I've added to my shopping list. <laughs> I really liked the little heart um, sort of charm that he used. And I'm also uh, very much liking those um, kind of embossing folders that cut the uh, sort of debossed words, which are very, very nice. And he used that on his tag. So for my words, I'm going to be using either a stamp or I'm going to be using these rub-ons and uh, I'm going to add a rub-on to this little silver heart. Most of my metal uh, on my tag is going to be um, silver rather than gold and I'm also uh, adding the black uh, little embellishments whether they be lettering or bits of ribbon and uh, that's just to tie everything together and um, it really is a fun um, look and you know it's great to go through your stash and see all the little extra bits and pieces, you know, the spare um, heart in this instance or uh, flower that perhaps you've used uh, the other things on other tags and you've been left with the odd one. This is a great way to use it up and it really does give a lovely effect when it's finished. So I'm stitching on my little pearl buttons to the yellow strip and I'm using um, a black thread, the same thread as I've used for the stitching and I'm stitching them on with a kiss so it looks quite nice uh, if you've got a four hold button rather than to stitch two um, parallel lines to actually st stitch it on with a uh, diagonal stitch so that you end up with a kiss shape which looks quite nice particularly if you're using words to do with love and making wishes and hope uh, a kiss is quite a nice um, addition to the centre of your buttons I'm piercing the hole using um, holding my um, tag and my button against some foam before I begin stitching. It just makes the job much easier to have those holes in place to start with and then stitching the button into place. You don't need too many stitches to hold buttons onto these kinds of projects, um, but just make sure you tie off your threads so that they don't come unraveled. So that's one little quilt piece finished. And I didn't have one of the new arrow charms but I'm going to create one using two of the stickers and I've got the industrial stickers here which are the border strips and they come with arrows so I'm going to be using those and I'm just thinking about what word to put with my arrow and I've decided to create a teeny tiny tag so I'm starting with a background of the scattered straw and then I've taken I've cut out the word brave from my um, rub on sheet and then I'm going to just rub it so that it's attached to my piece of card and then I'm going to trim it into a tiny tag shape ready to sit with my arrow charm. I'm going to tie on a little piece of black ribbon and um, these uh, little pieces of ribbon 
are the pieces that you get in the shoulders of your dresses or blouses to hold them onto the hangers. Now, um, I'm too lazy to actually use them. They always get in the way and poke out the top of my jumpers and tops, so I always cut them off. And I always keep them because they're a lovely thin ribbon and perfect for small details and small bits of embellishing on a project. So I've got this little black piece here and uh, this little metal leaf uh, from Creative Expressions is actually sort of a gold, old gold colour so I'm just trying to take some of that off and uh, just return it to the silver metal that's underneath. And I'm just using my sanding block to do that. And the next little embellishment that I'm going to use is a very special embellishment as it was sent to me by my friend Mo and uh, I've told her to watch out for me using the bits and pieces she sent me. She sent me a lovely little birthday package and uh, there were lots of little charms in a packet and it was really great fun to go through and such a lovely thought and I'm going to use it here uh, with uh, one of the little beads that came also in the packet as one of the charms or one of the embellishments on this tag. So great big thank you to Mo and a big kiss because uh, it really looks fab on here and I really did appreciate uh, it. Such a thoughtful gift, it was lovely. And uh, I'm gonna be using the words um, free to fly. And I think that kind of is what we all need to do uh, when we're creating. We need to just let our minds be free and uh, we can create lots of wonderful things and unique things by just exploring, just by trying and uh, I'm just using the lolly stick to rub one of the words onto my little shell charm and one or two of the words onto the actual quilt piece itself. So the reason it's uh, looking a little bit tricky is because it is a small piece that I'm using I just want to make sure before I pull the backing off that I've got uh, my word completely um, rubbed down. I don't want to pull any pieces of these tiny words off because it'd be a bit tricky to line up once uh, you remove the backing. So I'm just making doubly sure. Got a little bit of stitch coming undone. I'm just adding a bit of PVA glue there and then I'm ready to add my charm and I've got my hot glue gun on the go ready to attach some of the heavier embellishments. As I edit this video there are obvious points where I disappear off into my craft room next door to look for other little pieces of embellishments that I want to use on this tag. So I've gone and got some pink ribbon and you can see I've got some matching little roses here which I may or may not use on my finished tag. So I'm tying a little bit of pink ribbon to a wishbone charm and uh, Tim used one of these on his tag and I really do like these and uh, so I'm going to add the words to that and I'm just having a little bit of an experiment with where I might add flowers and what colour I might use to um, add some more interest to the little quilt squares on this project. Now I thought these paper roses were a little bit large so you can take them apart and use the centre sort of bud of the rose and I like those much better and uh, I think I might add those to the project. Not sure where yet so it's just a little bit of a a play as you uh, go along before you make those final decisions and finish off the quilt squares. So I'm just removing the little phrase make a wish so when you're using these rub on sheets just be careful or as careful as you can be not to completely destroy your sheet of rub on so that you've got little spare words here there and everywhere and uh, I just you just need to be a little bit careful how you cut them out and you can keep your sheet intact. Well, until a bit nearer uh, to having used more of the phrases. And I'm going to be collecting or using some of these little dandelion seeds. Uh, you know the dandelion clocks that you blow uh, to make a wish? Well, I'm going to be using three of those little seeds and I'm going to put them into one of these little um, glass vials that you can get from Ideology. And I'm adding three of them gently into this little glass vial and I'm going to keep them in there and use them as a potential three wishes on my little tag. This wasn't my idea and it is a really cute idea. I did see it on Pinterest. Unfortunately I didn't make a note at the time just in my head, oh I like that idea. Um, and I'm one thing that I do need to do when I use this idea is to make sure that you can see those little wishes 
inside the jar so you need a sort of slightly darker background the yellow is not really doing it and um, I'm just looking at ways to do that if you stick um, card onto the back of the um, vial you might find that they don't, it doesn't stick very well so I'm going to use my distress paint to colour just a small section of the back of the bottle where it's attached to the card and it just makes those little seeds a little bit more visible inside um, the little jar and I'm just putting that to one side to dry. So I've nearly got something for each of my little quilt squares but I've got one um, that I haven't got something for. I could have used the key but it just looks a little bit tiny and I'm thinking about using a pen nib which is something that um, Tim used on his. I didn't actually realise these were in different sizes so this one seems to fit perfectly so I'm going to embellish that a little further and I'm going to be using that on my uh, tag. So going back to my wishbone square I've decided the words that I'm going to use uh, rather than cut into my second sheet and use make a wish again I've decided to pick out one lucky day and I'm just going to group those words together so that I can sit my wishbone over the top of them and you can still read the words. So I'm going to start um, committing some of these elements to my tag and I'm going to be using hot glue to do this because it's quick when I'm working on video but you could equally do it at home with uh, pin flare um, which is like a silicone based glue. Next I'm adding my little arrow and I'm just going to tuck in the little uh, brave tag underneath the ribbon. Then I'm adding the little uh, pen nib. I'm just thinking about using a little, if I can get it to stay there, <laughs> the little rose with the nib. And I'm still not sure if it's a little bit too big. And now I think it's a little bit too small. So. <laughs> As I've already attached the pen to the quilt I've decided to use a piece of ribbon instead and I've just knotted a piece of the pink ribbon and I'm attaching it to the actual pen nib. Still trying to use that little um, <laughs> flower but I don't think it's going to work. So now adding Mo's little heart charm and little silver bead which is a bow shape and attaching that. I think I want to make an art piece like this. I want to make something for my wall in my house because I think this is a lovely uh, way to display little charms and um, I'm sure that you can make them from uh, bits and pieces that you've gathered over the years, perhaps shells from beaches and just little trinkets that you've collected along the way and you could display them on quilt pieces that match the colour scheme in your home for instance would look, look quite nice and uh, I think I'm going to give that a go. Uh, perhaps using shadow boxes to make your quilt might be another way to go. And a little bit of coordinating bling never goes amiss. <laughs> and as, I, as my pen nib already has a word on it which is note, I'm going to just add a couple of little um, pink teeny tiny gems to the quilt square. Again just to finish that off with a little bit of extra sparkle and also this time in the lilac to the love quilt square and I've chosen to attach my gems with some PVA glue and I'm going to add another little one to the top of my wishbone I'm adding that paper rose the one that I made slightly smaller next to the silver heart and a couple more this time yellow gems to my make a wish square. And I'm using the end of a barbecue skewer just to uh, maneuver my little teeny tiny gems into position. So my court pieces are nearly all finished. Um, I want to use this metal flower. Uh, the flower I think is from Ideology and I've got a leaf from Creative Expressions 
and I've got a couple of um, punched or die cut leaves which are from the tattered florals die um, they're punched out of a book page and I'm just going to colour them with the scattered straw and I'm going to add those underneath my metal flower and I think I'm going to be using this little ribbon flower in the centre just to finish it all off So layering up the actual leaf and I've decided just to go with um, one of the paper flowers and then my metal flower and then finally I'm just trimming down slightly the ribbon rose and then using the hot glue not only to keep the rose in um, or keep the rose from unfurling but also to attach it to the centre of my flower and then all I've got left to do is attach my Make-A-Wish uh, little bottle when um, it's dry. So now I've trimmed a piece of black card stock ready to attach my main tag and I'm making sure that I add the glue over that stitching again just as another safety measure and then I've just got a slight black frame around the edge of my tag making sure I press it down well so that it's nice and flat against the black card and then just trimming off that top edge and taking my scissors just to distress that, that edge slightly to match the rest of the tag. And I think that black frame just brings everything together. So now I'm ready to colour some ribbon to match my project. And you've seen me do this lots of times, but for those that may be watching that have never done this before, this is American seam binding. And I'm going to be using my distress inks to colour it to match my project. So I'm using the scattered straw and I've squished that against my craft mat and sprayed it with a little bit of water. And then I'm just randomly dotting my ribbon into the puddle of ink. And I'm keeping it nice and crinkly and then I'm actually tapping it with my ink pad just to get some areas of slightly stronger colour and then drying it. I don't want them to blend too much which is why I'm drying the colours in between whereas you could actually add the colours all together and create a little bit more of a blended effect. Um, I want to keep my colours nice and clean so again I'm adding the ribbon into a puddle of the Victorian velvet until I've got enough of the colour on my ribbon. Again, tapping it with the ink pad and drying it off. And then adding that final colour, which is the milled, uh, sorry, which is the shaded lilac. And that is where my video camera uh, memory card decided to fill up and I had to download my video so far. It's always right at the end. I think I need just a slightly bigger memory card and it's pretty big as it is. <laughs> so um, this tag was completed over a couple of days. This little vial is now dry and I'm going to uh, punch the hole in the top of the tag through the black card and then add a ribbon. I wasn't sure whether to tie it in a bow and I had a quick look. I uh, thought it was a little bit heavy on the top of my tag. looks okay but I think I prefer doing it as tails so I'm just almost creating a pom-pom I'm, I'm keeping it nice and thick so I'm just using my scissors to find the loop and looping the ends of the ribbon through so I've got quite a few tails here and I'm just making sure they're all pulled nice and tight and then trimming them off and like I said I just wanted to create a little bit more of a pom-pom effect with the tails of the ribbon on the top of the tag and again, this is a little present from Mo, a little lock charm and this little uh, safety pin. And it's perfect actually for adding uh, charms to the top of my tag. And I've got this little key. It's the wrong colour, so I'm just using a permanent pen to change it to black. So you can always tell by the change in light conditions. So it's obviously a different... Um, time of day now different sleeves so I've come back the next day to finish off this tag it was completed over a couple of days and I'm just adding some hot glue to the back of the Make-A-Wish charm and I'm being a little bit careful because I don't want to pull or scratch any of the paint that I've added to the back of the bottle and I'm just adding a little dot at the bottom just to hold the little 
uh, vial in place. They're quite light, so they're quite nice to use on paper projects. And I've actually used them on cards before as well. And uh, I'm going to finish the ribbon at the top with a little um, yellow flower to match the one that's on the actual quilt itself. And then I'm cutting out my printout that I showed you right at the beginning of Tim's tag and I like to add those to the back of my um, tags to show where the original inspiration came from and where I ended up. So I'm just adding my PVA glue and attaching Tim's tag to the back of mine and then I use a smaller version to create another little charm and I'm just using a scrap of coloured card to mount uh, Tim's 12 tags logo onto and then trimming it to fit. Now I will come back once I finally get to the shops and get some glossy accents to glossy accent this and give it a little bit more body but for now I'm just going to pierce a hole in the top of the sort of little ticket shaped charm and, and adding a little link and then I'm going to attach it to my little collection of charms to the top of my tag. And that's my journey from Tim's inspiration to my interpretation and this is my May tag for the 12 tags of 2014. I'm definitely going to give this a go for some home decor pieces because it's a lovely effect and a great time to go and look through all your embellishments so it's really good fun to put together. And the other thing that I've managed to finish off and I thought I would share with you here today is my tag storage for 2014 as well and um, I've been wondering how I wanted to treat this little um, tag storage unit this time round and I've decided to use the technique that Tim showed us in his September tag 2012. It's a really great industrial look using uh, Ranger's metal foil and I really had fun putting it together and I will show you the tags that I've got so far this year. So I'm just removing them from the little rail that is at the top of the tag storage and I have got, let's see, this is my January tag and if you remember again we use metal uh, but this time with paint and embossing on the tag at the beginning of the year and then we used distress glitters and uh, lots of romance on my Jan uh, February tag and in March we tried a smudging ink technique and that created two tags, one slightly darker than the other and I decided to change mine into little luggage labels. Then we went very pretty with gorgeous trellis um, background and um, some paper flowers and that was in April. And then finally I'm going to add my May tag and uh, that's the lovely quilt effect and looking at all the little embellishments that you've got in your stash and using some of them up which was great fun. If you like me love making tags then uh, this is the perfect place to store them. It happens to be a workshop that I offer for sale over on my Etsy shop. It's very reasonable and it is very easy to follow. You get full video and picture um, instructions plus all the cutting guides that you need in order to complete this project and the sky's the limit on how you decorate it as you can see here this is another idea and something you could do uh, just by visiting Tim's blog and checking out that uh, metal technique. So here's a better shot of the tag storage unit it's a little bit difficult to get it all in when you're using the overhead camera and I think um, it it really has turned out looking lovely and steampunk. You can make this in any style, any style that suits your tags and uh, I think that uh, I'm going to have great fun filling this up with the rest of my tags for this year. So if you are interested in making one of these cute little storage units for yourself then I will leave the link for you at the end of this video. I try my best to get a close-up of the little wishes inside the bottle. Uh, I think you can just about see them here. It was really difficult not to get the glare on the glass. And uh, here's a close-up of some of the charms, including uh, the lovely charm that I created from the bits and pieces 
that uh, the lovely Mo sent to me and uh, I think that this little shot here shows you just all the interest that you can create with your embellishments and how pretty they can all look just by coordinating them with the colours that you use and uh, there's the final tag. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have don't forget to hit subscribe. Sorry it's a bit long but there was a lot of details. I look forward to crafting with you again soon. Thank you for watching.